earth signs this is going to be your general reading for april 2022 uh today i'm going to be doing a nine card spread for you because over on the website i have done the individual readings and they all have to deal with um, the Jupiter Neptune conjunction, which is going to be occurring on the 9th of April, uh, and that is done by Sun Sign. And so, if you are interested in viewing those website members, you can simply click on the little eye that's going to show up here over uh, in one of the corners, uh, and that'll take you directly over to the website where you can log in. If you are not a member, you are still able to view those. You can purchase the three day video pass and watch those and do make notes because it's a really interesting. There were really interesting readings uh, about what this energy, the Jupiter Neptune energy is all about. OK, um, and so last month has been a very, very busy month for me. This month, April, is going to be even busier. My schedule looks like I don't know what, but that's because my daughter is starting her clinicals. So for the past three nights, she's been riding out with the ambulance, going on EMT calls. She went to a fire. She did some other car wrecks. So she's doing all this stuff. And then she's also doing uh, the emergency room. And so since she doesn't have her driver's license yet, that means that I've got to take her everywhere that she needs to go. So this month is really, really busy for me. And uh, I will have to see how things will be shaping up for the month of May. Uh, and May, she will be graduating. And so after that, I'll have all the time in the world to devote to working and doing my craft. Anyway, um, this will be for the signs of Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. So that encompasses both sun, moon, and rising for these. And uh, I have with me today the Radiant White deck. I have with me the La Vida Sibilas, and we will be wrapping the reading up with the Golden Nostradamus card. So I've already done some meditation and shuffling on your sign on the Earth Glyph, okay? And what we're going to try to do is to just go ahead and uh, lay the cards and get started with the reading. I hope everyone is well. Uh-oh, card just presented itself. Um... I don't know. The energy feels, even though, you know, there's a war going on and there are high prices and there's still COVID lurking around out there. Um, it just kind of feels to me, and maybe it's because the seasons have changed, kind of a joyous kind of a time. I mean, it's spring um, and things are starting to blossom. We're starting to see things renew themselves. And so hopefully we too can pick up on some of that energy of renewal and renewing our spirits and finding some joy and being able to get out and be active. So what card just fell out? The page of pentacles. All right, let's play the rest of the cards. Oh, wow. The eight of pentacles. The tower card. Don't freak out. The seven of cups. Well, that's kind of self-explanatory. The Eight of Cups. Hmm. The Death card. Big energy, Earth signs. Big energy. Okay. The Page of Cups. Huh. The Knight of Cups. And the Five of Cups. Wow, that's a lot of cups. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, what is over the entire reading? It is the devil card. Well, there's our old friend Saturn <laughs> coming in to uh, delay something for us. Uh, and, you know, Saturn doesn't deny you things. He just delays things for you. Okay, he, he does deliver, but it may not be in the manner in which you expect it to be. So I have two coins, five cups, and two major arcana cards. Now, uh, <clears throat> I would venture to say that April is going to be a month in which some of you, there's going to be a lot of uh, emotions happening and going on, all right? And... Uh, <clears throat> 
these two pages traditionally represent people, but for me, they are just news and messages uh, concerning either finances or the doing of something, uh, some kind of offer, uh, something that perhaps kind of surprises you and has an emotional quotient to it, because that's what the cups are to me. They're not just about love and romance. They are about emotions. The pentacles are not just about finances. They are about the doing of things. And so I have two eights here. I have two pages. And I have one, two, three, uh, what do you call it? Court cards. So this tells me that there may be at least three people involved because traditionally they represent people. Here is this idea as well of uh, three people in a situation and what I see is perhaps some kind of financial news or message or you're working on a project you're doing something but then something happens unexpectedly out of the blue and this is what the tower card is telling me and the tower card is simply that idea of unexpected events happening but also this idea of you having a particular idea or thought or belief system about something and then it's taken away from you. Something happens that makes you question everything you thought you knew or what you were doing or what you believed. And we see that this creates a lot of confusion. So I'm not exactly sure if this is talking to me about some type of financial project that you're working on. Uh, something that you're trying to do. Um, maybe this is even finances. So this is a warning to you that there could be some financial loss in this, okay? But there's some confusion here with the Seven of Cups. And the Seven is um, this idea of questioning yourself, of some self-doubt, particularly after this happens. But it also talks about you having a lot of choices to choose from. So if something collapses, once we recover, we've got to figure out what it is that we need to do, right? Because a lot of times when the tower happens, um, it, it clears the ground. There's an open field. And, uh, and so once that field is open, there are many, many possibilities now from which you can operate. And so to me, this card is saying that there's, there's some confusion going here. I don't understand why this happened or what do I do now? You know, I could do X, I could do Y, or I need to do X, or I need to do Y, and I need to do Z, but I don't know what to do. And then we see this Eight of Cups. Now, the Eight of Cups is the only eclipsed moon in the tarot. So this may have something to do with uh, the, uh, and I don't have my... I don't have my eclipse document here with me, but I know that there are some eclipses happening coming up. We're about to move into eclipse season, but this could also be a reference to the last eclipse that we had. And I'm, I'm so sorry I'm not prepared uh, with that information. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Hold on. I, I've got it online. So just here in my file someplace. Let me just see if I can find it. And then I can tell you exactly, I don't even know what I'm doing. Hold on. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know if it's under my astrology documents. So that we can figure out kind of a timing on this. Uh, because here it is, my Eclipse Survival Guide. And by the way, website members, you can download one of these. Uh, there and when you go to your account and go to your user documents there's a link there uh, you can download this and print it out so you can be abreast of these eclipses so okay so the last eclipse was a solar eclipse that we had on December 3rd and it fell at 12 degrees Sagittarius well, the first solar eclipse for this eclipse season, and eclipses come in pairs, they come in twos. They open and then they close the sequence. So our first solar eclipse is going to be April 30th at 10 Taurus. So Taurian suns, anything you, if you have, if your sun is at 10 degrees, this eclipse is gonna fall on it. Uh, if you, you know, if your moon is at, uh, 
what do you call it, 10 Taurus, then that's going to be pulled in. Any other factor that you have at 10 Taurus is going to be pull, pulled in. Um, and so to me, this is telling me in terms of a timing that what we are looking at, if we're not looking at the December eclipse, okay, then we're looking at the one that's coming up at the end of the month of April. All right. And what I will tell you, and now this kind of makes sense to me, what I will tell you is that eclipses uh, typically close things out. Okay. Um, and eclipses are kind of like information blackouts. Uh, stuff happens and you don't know, or it triggers something in your life and you don't know exactly what that's going to be. You may have no clue what's happening here. And then suddenly the thing happens. Right, and then we're left feeling confused. And this says, this Eight of Cups with this Eclipse Moon here is telling us that there is something that we have been invested in emotionally that we're just gonna have to walk away from. And that's gonna close out a chapter for you, okay? And I think what I like about this uh, next card here coming after the Death card is the Page of Cups. The Page of Cups is just an offer, right? It's it's a message. It's an offer that says, um, you know, something else will be coming your way, all right, that you may feel happy about or, you know, joyous about, uh, that might even, for instance, have some type of financial um, message to it. And the reason why I'm saying this is because of that fish. And fish have long been known to represent prosperity okay and we see that the message also it it grows in i don't want to say importance but maybe intensity here with this knight of cups but it's a fickle energy okay the knight of cups is a fickle energy so this is the idea of promises being made but then somebody not follow not following through okay and we do see that for some of you this does happen here right and that we end up lamenting something that we've lost but what i like about this particular card is i call it the two of cups in disguise because back here if you'll just turn around don't feel sorry for yourself don't lament whatever these three things are turn around you've got the two cups behind you okay and these two cups are not necessarily about uh what do you call it um, romance it, it can be for all I know this could be a a um, romantic situation uh, but it it the two of cups is about finding that balance of masculine and feminine energies within yourself balancing the mind the body the spirit uh, this holistic kind of a thing regaining your composure Okay, the two of cups can also be that there's a new partner perhaps on the way and this could be any kind of partner. All right. So when I started out and I was saying that this is something that you are invested in emotionally, you are heavily invested in this from all of the cups. Now, the devil card here, the devil is not always a negative card. And what the devil is about, it is about uh, that third dimensional aspect. So this could be about... Um, you know, slaving away at, I don't know, socking away money or getting that promotion or uh, being seen in a particular way. You're standing in the community because it's, it represents Capricorn uh, and, and the planet Saturn. Uh, but it can also be about power and control issues. It could be about obsession. It could be about uh, sexual obsession with someone. Um, and so it represents all of those third dimensional things that we do. The devil is about temptations and those things that tempt us in our life, right? That ultimately can, can sometimes bind us and chain us in such a way. Okay, but the devil card, and it also says something looms, something large looms that may be frightening for us, but ultimately in the end, it's going to turn out all right. And so the message of this card is you are never chained or bound in such a way that you can never be free. All right. What it requires is hard work, rolling up your sleeves, doing the hard work, facing the realities of the situation, not being caught up in a fog. Okay. 
of fantasy or delusion. All right. Um, being clear out about clear eyed about any promises that may be made to you. Okay, or, or, or being conscious of any promises that you may make to someone so that you don't unduly disappoint them. Does that make any sense? Okay, so let me pull out my book here. If this is a relationship, say a, a long-term relationship or a marriage or something like that, you guys have been working on it, and then suddenly somebody just comes along and says, you know what, I can't do it anymore. What do you chain yourself to? If you are with somebody, and even if this is a business or a friendship, if you're with somebody and they're just like dragging you down and being really, really negative, then what are you, why are you hanging on to that energy? You know, and I, what, what my guides are telling me is that they're saying that the work has been done. There's nothing more that can be done. Okay, even if this is a, a, a personal work situation, there's nothing more that can be done about whatever this situation is. So let me grab my book to see if I can glean any. I can't look at these three cards because traditionally they represent people. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start back here with the pentacles. Something I think you've been working on. And I think what I'm getting is that for some of you, you've been working and you're not really paying attention to what else is going on. Even though you may have received the, um, what do you call it? kind of the signals or the red flags because indeed the two eights speak to a slight concern in regards to a new relationship romance or partnership okay and i will say most definitely that um it's not going to go the way that you think it is and to me this feels more like a defeat for you okay that's that's what it says um it's about the eight of pentacles here is having high hopes for the future as present situations and ventures are going well and the outlook of the future is good but it tells you do not rest on your laurels okay we see it here it doesn't tell me anything next to these but i mean the death card is self-explanatory right the seven of cups there's a lot of cups here so i would say if you can steal yourself emotionally because most definitely we uh see a change here again the seven can financially indicate that something you have worked long and hard for will prove beneficial on many accounts but you may not have re expected payment as such but your work has been worth the reward, but it indicates a time of illusion and of difficulties in decision making. And it asks that you wake yourself up and know that all things are possible. It also asks you to narrow down your choices as you have too many options to choose from, which may lead to confusion. It tells of an important decision to make, one that sees you on the brink of a new life cycle. There may be choice here, so consider all options carefully. Use common sense, logic, and a dash of intuition when deciding your options. It is also a message to expect the unexpected. We see it here. And I don't think many of you are seeing the unexpected. Okay? You're just not paying attention. Eight of Cups. And, and the, the, the funny thing about eights are that eights are positive numbers. They are also numbers of money, but they also represent the idea that there's a new cycle coming, right? You, you leave the seven, right? Here's the seven. And you add a cup. Okay, well, emotionally, I'm going to have to accept whatever this is. I'm going to have to make a decision so that I can move on. And an eight can imply that long, late plans have come to a halt and you may be feeling stuck. But it can also indicate the decline of a matter, slight consequences, withdrawal, and or abandonment. But this may prompt you to try something new. So think carefully before going back to establish plans as you may wish to abandon them entirely 
or amend and adapt your goals to suit the situation better. And that's what I think this is. I think you you get some kind of news or some kind of event happens and you think about going back to where you were before. But I don't think some of you can go back. Uh, the Eight of Cups is an indication of a new interest that it's on your, that it's on its way into your life. Uh, this could be by way of personal relationships or experience and new knowledge gained. It indicates a situation where the only solution is to let go entirely. Regardless of how much energy or effort has been put into it, if it is still not working, the only option is to abandon it. Do not waste any more of your time and effort. So this card carries with it a sense of sadness and re resignation and acceptance. To me, that's always this card. And what I find interesting is when we take the five cups from this, it leaves me three cups. Right? It leaves me three cups. So to me, there's an implied ace here. Okay. Now, we want to move to the five of cups. Well. Remember, it's a five. And fives always talk about the changing energy, a time of ups and downs. Okay. And you may be feeling bitter by the end of this or empty or disappointed, but the feelings will pass. And the Two of Cups lets you know that contentment and happiness will return. But it also tells you that dwelling on what might have been is a futile exercise. And it is far better to accept things and learn the lesson and then move on. It may indicate that although things may have not gone to plan, there is something remaining which is able to be worked and improved upon. And that things are not as final as they may initially seem. It can suggest that you are worried love will pass you by and there is a feeling of being unloved. So this card may presage a breakup of a relationship, marriage, or partnership of some kind. Or losing something of personal value. But it talks about focusing on the negatives instead of looking to the positives. And I know that sometimes when you are going through the crap, you know, it's difficult to see the positive aspect of this. But here's a meaning. Here is the five of cups with the devil. And it says that it is an indication that you must take the time to contemplate all options and avenues before stepping forward. Quiet, positive contemplation is needed to achieve focus. Not to do so will incur wasted energies. So remember, we're talking here that this card says don't waste any more energy on this. Don't waste any more time on it. What's done is done. But just because what's done is done doesn't mean that all hope is lost. You know, that old saying when one door closes, another one opens, that is very true. But again, it can be difficult when you're in the middle of the soup, right? So here's what I want to do. This really speaks to a complete and su sudden end. Past, present, future, past, present, future with the interplay of the cards. Confusion and sadness. But if you look over here, it's a message. That message comes to an end. But again, you're at the very end. Like I said, all is not lost. So this is really going to depend on how well you can maintain... Uh, control over your emotions okay think about it like this everybody saw the slap hurt around the world with will smith and chris rock he was not able to he, all that hard work that he put in he finally got a, a oscar i mean really he, the pinnacle who would have ever thought that this little rapper kid from philadelphia would end up being receiving an oscar for best actor and what does he do? He lets his emotions get the best of him. And now he can't even enjoy that win that he had. He can't give any interviews. You know, they're thinking about kicking him out of the skill actors, uh, screen actors guild. Some people say they want his Oscar taken away. He really ruined that whole thing for everybody else because it was the first time it was a black produced, all black, 
you know, a, a truly historical moment. He, you know, poor Questlove couldn't even, you know, it just, the deaf guy, it just overshadowed everything. Why? Because he was unafraid. He was unable to control his emotions, uh, regardless of what was said and if it was done uh, purposely or not. Okay. I don't think Chris Rock may have known that she had alopecia because I didn't know his wife had alopecia. Uh, the Smiths are just not somebody I keep up with. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this uh, tower card. So this is about not self-sabotaging yourself to the best of your ability. It is okay to be sad and to lament, maybe even to be angry. Uh, but all is not lost. So here we go. Dinari. Dilaranti. Superbia. Now, remember when I said to you this could be the idea that there's a sudden financial loss here? So maybe this is somebody who comes in to say, hey, uh, you know, I got this great venture that we should get in together or we should join forces, move in together, whatever the case may be. And you end up, you know, losing your money. So out of pride, maybe it's out of pride. Or because somebody likes the good life. Sometimes this is the good life. Okay. Remember I was talking about the devil? Those things are changing. Maybe you've been spending too much. Maybe you done overextended yourself. Why? Because you like all the clothes and the designer bags and that kind of crap. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a look at that Dilleranti so I can explain it to you. I want to look at this card. Because whatever this is. It's not what you think it is. It's tentative. It's fickle. And it doesn't mean a lot. The dispiacere, the lanamica, and the disgrazia. Well... I don't even know if this is romance because there's a there's a possibility that there's three people here at least so even if it's not a romantic situation this could be a business partnership or friendship and with this you're gonna get some news or message remember I said uh, that the cups are just about emotions this is going to come in and maybe you're waiting on some kind of news yeah we're gonna get back together or we're gonna make men fences and you know make up and whatever the case may be but that news is telling you that there is somebody who has been plotting behind you. She can be the ex-wife uh, or ex-girlfriend. She can be a completely new and different person. Um, I mean, that has come into the scene. The thing is, is that this is the unknown enemy. In other words, this could even be somebody who is around you that you don't even know has been scheming and plotting behind your back. But this tells me there's a discovery of that. And the news that you get really rocks you to your core. And it talks about the idea of humiliation, public humiliation, public shame. Okay. That's what that says. So let me read it to you. Y'all go sit down. Oh, I have a new thing to show you. Come in on. Come in on. Come here. Can y'all see that? Look, somebody dumped her. I'll show her to you in a minute afterwards. She's hanging around in the, somebody dumped her. So we got a new dog. They already know what you look like, Luke. Let's go to the Dilleranti card. This does not portend uh, well. And, and so I'm, I'm here to warn you that, that there is a, a shock to be coming to you. Based upon who the Dilleranti are in the coins. The Dilleranti. The Dilleranti are known as the... Oh my God, no. Give me that. The lunatics. Give me that. <laughs> Give me that. The Dilleranti are known as the lunatics. And uh, it describes someone who is irrational. Uh-oh. Dang it. Where are they? It's not the thief. It's the Dilleranti. What number is it? The nine. 
so let's talk about it here. Irrational and someone who's lost uh, a perspective and mentally confused, although they don't even realize it. Um, this card can indicate that you are or you've been associated with a uh, bad company taking bad advice and hanging out with bad friends or at least with people who by persuasion might push you into illegal situations sometimes it is associated with large gatherings where trouble can be expected it can indicate hallucinations contradictions illusions of grandeur that's what this is and self-exaltation it can represent someone with a massive ego. Generally, the card describes setbacks, delays, accidents, recklessness, disorganization, opposition, mutually exclusive beliefs, precarious conditions, and transitory states. It heralds complications of all kinds and or the worsening of a situation, uh, as well as arguments and confusion. It heralds problems and trouble on all fronts, grave arguments and falling out with clients, partners, and family members. It warns of foolish decisions and dangerous situations caused by someone's lack of control. Now, here with the with the money card, and that's the thing about this card. It doesn't fall in the suit of coins. It falls in the suit of emotions, of cups, because we know that most couples, if they have a divorce or falling out, it's typically over some type of financial thing, right? Okay. Or after the, the breakup becomes, then the fight becomes about property, what the devil represents. This implies that whoever the person is, they've been perhaps been spending recklessly. Okay, and that may even be you. Get down from there. Right? And then we have this, the La Namika. And the Disgrazia card, let me explain to you what the Disgrazia card, it is the Seven of Swords. I think someone betrays you is is what I'm I'm getting. And it implies that you have not learned from past mistakes or that a mistake from the past will come to exact payment in the present. You will feel as though you are a hapless victim of circumstance and completely powerless. But the card indicates a drastic and radical change because something will never return to the way it used to be. Okay? Now, this card can sometimes speak about accidents, okay? But I have to be really, really careful about the way that I uh, interpret that here, because this can, can sometimes be about accidents out of the blue, accidents as well. In personal relationships, it heralds a painful and sudden separation, violence, or the loss of a friend or family member, bereavement, and the traumatic and unexpected loss of a loved one. In financial matters, it heralds a sudden and unexpected expected dismissal, repossessions, foreclosures, embezzlement, bankruptcy, and problems with the tax man. It indicates grave mistakes that will be paid for dearly. This is all it says. And whatever the, the news is, it heralds the arrival of traumatic events. Um, that may you may even be unwillingly or unknowingly involved in. Okay. And this card wants to convey that usually, but not always, you don't deserve what has happened to you. trying to see if there's anything else in here I can pull out of this and there are no um, what do you call it positive cards to counteract this one well somewhat the two this is one of the lucky cards in the deck found upright and that can mitigate it in the sense that, you know, this is uh, a situation that could blow up in your face or in someone's face, but that it may not 
be as bad as you think it is. That's why I, I keep getting the sense that uh, all is not lost. If this is a romantic situation, you will be finding out that there's been a third party. Somebody's about to leave. And uh, maybe if you check your bank account, you're going to find that there's a lot of money missing <laughs> or being recklessly spent. Okay. And you don't know why that is. Well, here's your answer. The person has somebody else that they're trying to impress. All right. So formulate your question for the angel. Oops. For the golden Nostradamus card. Well, this card brings hope. It is the eight, the stork. So, and this may not seem like it has anything to do with it, but here we go. Well, I don't know. In youth, we feather our own nest. In old age, we seek only rest. Joy will arrive soon. Positive, unexpected news or a new birth yet to be conceived or already on its way. This can sometimes be the announcement of a new baby. Well, I don't even know what to tell you about that. That's what I have for you, Earth Signs, uh, for April. Now let me bring Nan over here. She's named Nan after the Indian bread. Come here, Nan. Come here, Nan. Come here, Nan. Come here, Nan. She's three months old. I happened to step out on my porch at 11 o'clock uh, Friday night. And there she was sitting in my driveway. And I have rescued so many dogs. Tell them hi, Nan. Hi, Nan. That, uh, but we're going to keep this one. Unfortunately, we weren't able to keep Spanky. We're going to keep her. Um, she fits in really well with us. She's a great little, a great little uh, addition. The big dog likes her, the cat likes her, and that's that. So that's the newest member of the family. Okay, so that's what I have for you, Earth Signs, for April. Until next time, be well, stay safe, and namaste.